I want you to see something. So when you go to the book of Esther, chapter number one, you're going to notice that is when, um, you know, Vashti uh, dishonors the king and she refuses to show herself. You go to Esther, chapter two, that is when um, uh, Esther now becomes a queen. Then chapter three is when Haman releases letters for the Jews to be executed. And then you have uh, chapter number four, that is when Esther and, um, and the Jews and Mordecai, they begin to fast. So chapter four is the story of fasting. Chapter five is when Esther gets favor. Chapter six, Mordecai is remembered also. Then chapter seven, Haman is hanged. Uh, chapter eight, we see the, all the evil decrees or so all the letters that had been released for the Jews to be executed, they are withdrawn. And then chapter number nine, we see the enemies of the Jews are permanently executed. So the Jews gain power and they permanently execute uh, the enemies of, of, of the Jews. Then chapter number 10, uh, 10 we see Mordecai is the next to the king. He is great, not only great, but he's next to the king. So that is basically the brief of the book of Esther. The reason why I summarize it like that, because I don't want you not to understand anything. And please, as a believer, let the word of God be what you feed on. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. When you study, don't just study to accomplish study. Study for it to work in your life. The word of God is life, life. So when you study it, you should receive life. So that's the book of Esther. And I want you to see the flow here. That's why I summarize, because I want you to see a flow. Because sometimes when you just pick a scripture from somewhere, if somebody doesn't understand what God is leading us to, you will get lost in the story. So I want you to see the flow in the book of Esther, that it begins with a woman called Vashti who dishonored the king, the husband, and then Esther comes into the scene because now the king needs to get another wife. And so Esther comes into the scene and she gets favor. She, this is a young Jew girl. Uh, she doesn't have much to, to offer in terms of kingship, but she had God. And so she gets access. So we see Esther as a Jew gets access in a government that has got nothing to do with being a Jew. And so she gets access. And then we see in, uh, in chapter number three is when Haman releases letters to execute the Jews. Now, I want you to notice something. As soon as Esther got access, as soon as Esther got access into the government of the day, then there was a threat. There was a threat because this is when now, you know, Haman would, uh, would ride around um, the kingdom and he wanted everybody has to bow before him and Mordecai couldn't bow. And because he was agitated, because Mordecai wouldn't bow before him, he saw he was going to finish all the Jews. That is where the vendetta began. And so I want you to notice that as soon as Esther got access into kingship, as soon as she got access into this palace, then there was a battle. Why am I bringing this along? Because I want you to understand we are in a season where we are shifting. You're going to start seeing new things. I'm sure most of you have already begun to experience it, maybe spiritually or in the natural. And if you have begun, you can always comment. I should be able to see that later for those of you that are on Zoom. And so. Um, we see that as soon as Esther gets access, then there is an attack. Uh, obviously, uh, when the Jews are attacked, she's part of the Jews. When Mordecai is under attack, she, she, she already was under the attack. And so what did they do? The Bible says in chapter number four, they went into prayer and fasting. Actually, Esther declared a fast, and they went into three days dry fasting. And uh, it was a very serious thing because already, you know, the letters had been released. It, there was already a decree. There was already a law that, that was to finish all the Jews. But that did not keep them from praying and trusting the Lord. And they went into prayer and fasting. Now, there is one thing I want you to know. That as soon as, as soon as there is something God is doing in your life, whether it begins in the spirit, whether it begins in the natural, I want you always to be aware of battle. Every time you have a breakthrough, every time your seasons change, every time you have access, there will be powers of darkness that are going to kind of accompany that access, that breakthrough. Every time you get a breakthrough, you know what happens? And that is why we get caught unawares. Because as soon as you get a new contract, then you go into a thanksgiving mode and you remain there. Now you start trusting God for the next promotion. You just start trusting God for the next, you know, phase. That is very, very appropriate. However, I want you to know from today, whenever you have access, whether it's access of money, access of business, access of a relationship, any form of access, every time you have access, a dimension that you have never accessed before, 
or you have been in that level. However, you have gone deeper. For example, you are in business, but now you have a new contract. You are in business, but now you have a great client that you have gotten. You are in career, but now you got a promotion. Every time you access a new level, you must always go into warfare because every new level comes with its own battles. I don't want to say challenges. It comes with serious battles because that realm has got gatekeepers. That realm has got powers that are going to wonder how did you get here? That is why you see people saying new levels, new devils. Have you ever heard people say that? Yes. And so what happens to most of us, you get into a new level, you enter into, you, you access some money that is more than what you access every month of every year, you access something extra, you access some serious favor, and then all of a sudden, you are not even aware, you go into battle and you lose it, and you abort it. So today, as we are going to pray, we are going to be praying against powers that have caused most of you to lose the access you got. Some of you had very powerful introductions. You got introduced to very powerful people, people had, that had capacity to take you to the next level. But a few days later, they cannot even reply your messages. They cannot even receive your calls. Why? You had access, but you lost it because you didn't realize that every time you have access, you get battles. You enter into battle. It's like access comes packaged with a battle right so you see as soon as esther became the queen immediately battle began as because our powers in this kingdom wondering what is a girl who is a jew doing as a queen in this kingdom you see i want you to know that we are in this world but we don't belong here so every time you access a dimension Allah bakata, the enemy will be wondering how did you access who brought you here? Who opened the door? And you know, the enemy will destabilize you. And if you do not have enough invested prayer, if you do not have authority that allows you to fight in that realm and remain there, you're going to lose it. You are going to lose. That is why people rise and fall. That is actually the core reason for rising and falling. Even in the things of the spirit, you find somebody is so powerful. Then after a few years, they, have, they, they just vanish. They are there, but they vanish. You don't hear about them anymore. They're not impacting as much. There is just some slowness in the length of the spirit or in the natural. So it is important for you to notice that every time you find access, there is always going to be enemies that are going to follow the access that you have received. Some of you, you get access, you get a job, but because there are enemies that have followed you, you will never get a promotion. You remain in the same salary, year after year you will never you will never be honored you never be recognized you you will serve so well but you are not going to be uh, you know what god intended you to be the fact that he took you there right now so what i want you to notice now is after they got the access after esther and of course Mordecai, the relative got the access and then there was battle they declared their first they declare the first. In other words, whenever you get access, whenever you get a new dimension, whether in the spirit, you never used to see visions. And all of a sudden, you're beginning to see visions. Your dreams were never clear. And all of a sudden, your dreams are clear. You never used to have any impact in the things of the spirit. And all of a sudden, God has given you impact. All of a sudden, your children are beginning to listen to you concerning the things of the Lord. That is an access. That is an access. You have not had a job for a long time. Or all of a sudden you have a job or your business was going very, very slow. All of a sudden now you're seeing some clients coming or you're seeing some sales happening. That is an access. What you need to do is to declare war because that dimension you have entered has its enemies. But then you see now from, from when they began to pray in chapter number four, that is a flow all the way to chapter number 10. I want you to notice something there. There is a flow. When they began to pray and fast in chapter number four of the book of Esther, those of you that are joining us now, we are studying and praying through the book of Esther. You will notice from chapter number four all the way to chapter number 10, there is actually a flow, not just a flow, a flow of victory. What does that tell you? That the fasting they did, the prayer they did, it was able to keep the enemy at bay. The fasting they did, the praying they did, it was able to abort the plans of the enemy. Remember, Satan comes to see you kill and destroy. And the agenda here for Haman or the enemy, the agenda was actually to kill the Jews. 
But because they decided to pray and fast, the agenda of the enemy was aborted. So prayer is very important. Now that we are entering into a new season, I, I believe I spoke more about that and we prayed last week. And so we are just following up on that. Now that we are entering into a new season, the next part of the year, I want you to notice that there, there are things God is getting you into. There is breakthrough God is going to give unto you. There is access you are going to experience. There is unusual favor you are going to get. There are divine helpers that are going to come your way. There is recognition your business is going to find you're going to find favor with institutions that the access that God is giving you, you have to guard it and you guard it by prayer, you guard it by fasting, you guard it by kingdom service so that you have a continuous flow. Like it was in the days of Esther and Mordecai from chapter four to chapter number 10, there was continual, continuous flow of breakthrough and victory. We see the enemies are being defeated. We see, uh, we see Mordecai becomes greater. We see Haman is dying. We see the king giving Esther all the S stage of Haman. So we see victory after victory after victory. And most of you cannot sustain victory because you do not understand there is a dimension of prayer that you do and you pray because of being able to sustain the kind of access God has given you. And so for you to be able to sustain the access God have given you, uh, you need to notice that uh, you have to change your gear, your gear of the things of the spirit. You have to change your gear. If Esther never went into fasting and prayer, I can tell you for sure they could have been killed. They could have died because it was not a maybe. The decree was already there. The letters were already there. The date was set for them to be executed. Let me tell you something. The enemy already have it theorized how he is going to finish you. He's not trying. He, he, he wants to do it. He's got in place everything he can bring in your life and bring you down. That is the devil we are dealing with. We are not dealing with a Satan who is merciful. Satan can kill you tomorrow if he gets the opportunity. And so he was willing to wipe away all the Jews, not just Mordecai, who would not bow before Haman. The devil, this Haman, was willing to wipe away all the Jews. Ashallah, bakotaba. So if they never fasted, they could have gone to a very serious time of, uh, of pain and trouble and, and, and killed. Now, so it is important for you to pray. And I want you to notice that when seasons change, you have to be very, very, you know, quickly, be quick, uh, do things drastically, start praying, and not just casually. Notice that they went from us not knowing their spirituality to a level where they're declaring a fast. They are coming from us not really knowing much about Esther's spirituality. We don't know who taught her fasting. We don't know how she knew that fasting releases power. We don't know how she knew that fasting can generate, you know, God's, God, God's ability to change the situation. But Esther was already spiritual because she could not declare something like this if she didn't know what she was doing, if she didn't know the power in fasting. And so she acted quickly and she did not just act. She used a weapon that she knew what. So I believe Esther was not doing this thing for the first time. This is a weapon she had used it before. She even knew that there's three days, no eating, no nothing, three days. And I am telling you, after it was done, the breakthrough she had projected, it came through. So you have to be very swift. You have to be a person who understands what we want to take because most of the time you enter into a new uh, uh, place and you don't even know what we want to use. You don't know what to do. So you need to know what you need to uh, what you need to, to use, what weapon do you need to use? So I have said you need to change gears in the spirit. That is why I even say this month of July, we may not have two sessions uh, of uh, teaching and prayer every week. I possibly will have one, you know, of prayer. This session, I teach a little bit and then we pray in the same session. Why? Because for me, I know this is a new season, is a new, is a new time. We are going to get access, especially, you know, if you're a person who've been who've been waiting upon the Lord, uh, we are in a in a season that is new, even as a body of Christ, as individuals, as families, as businesses, as careers. We are in a season that is basically new. And I know you're seeing it in the spirit. Some of you are dreaming dreams you never had before. Some of you are able to see visions, uh, you know, showing you your tomorrow, things that you could never be able to see before. 
Therefore, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ uh, that you're going to rise in a dimension in the spirit uh, that allows you to sustain that what God is giving you access to. That is a dimension of spirituality that allows you and enables you to sustain what God is giving you access into. There is a height in the spirit that allows you to sustain the access that God has given you. Have you had business contracts? Have you had financial access? Have you had career promotion? Whatever access you have, there is a spiritual height that will allow you to sustain or to maintain that spiritual level. And therefore, I pray for you today in the name of Jesus Christ that the grace of God will allow you to go into that height in the spirit that will sustain the levels of God in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you now begin to open up your mouth and pray and tell the Lord, Father God, I thank you for the new level that you're giving me. The new level of access of the things of the spirit, of the things that are natural. Father Lord, I thank you. I pray the Lord you empower me. Empower me to sustain the new dimension you brought in my life. That when Haman's arise, I'll be positioned. When evil what he quiz I decreed over my life, over my business, over my marriage. I'll be in a level to abort what the enemy wants to do against me. Can you pray and declare? Father, in the name of the Lord, I pray the Lord you're going to give me the grace to remain a shelabaka in a place of prayer, in a place of increasing authority in Christ, increasing power in Christ. Lisa Taba, you know what Esther did together with the Jews. It is the same thing that Jesus did when the Bible says that the spirit of God drove him in the wilderness and then he came back with power. It was because of the, the life he lived, the life of in the mountain. He used to go in the mountains. That is the life that sustained him even when he was, he was supposed to be killed because so many times they wanted to kill him, but he lived a life of prayer. There is a level that sustains your next level. That is a spiritual level that sustains Sustains your next level. You see, most of us, last year you used to pray for three hours. You are still praying for three hours. Things don't work like that. You have to keep on rising up. You have to keep on rising up. You have to keep on increasing up. You are still giving, you know, uh, an amount of money last year. And this year you're still giving the same. That, that, that means you cannot sustain the next level. You will know you can sustain the next next level, how you act, how you do, how you pray, how you give, how you serve God, you will know if you can sustain the next level. Therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm releasing the grace, the grace to remain in the secret place. I pray for you right now, and I release the grace to remain in the secret place. I release right now. Fire, fire on your altar of prayer. Lisa Tama Kolabakaya, that you're going to have the fire of God. You're going to be on fire for God. Lisa Toba Koshareba, Rama Kota Liabakande. I pray for you today that you are going to have the zeal for the things of God, the zeal for the secret place, zeal for being in a place where you are used by God. Whatever entangles you, whatever keeps you busy, whatever keeps you in unbelief, whatever keeps you in a dimension where you cannot maintain the level that God wants you to operate in, I crush it now by fire. I crush it by fire. Yeah, I decree right now, the zeal of God is going to burn in you. The zeal of God will drive you. It will be your driving force. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you shall enter into dimensions in the spirit that you have never been able to access before. In the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of laziness, every spirit of anti-progress in prayer, anti-progress in the things of God, anti-progress in obedience to the Lord, every spirit of darkness, I crush it by fire. 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 
in the mighty name of the Lord, I decree and I declare that the things that God is doing in your life this July, in this second half of the year, the things that God is doing in your life, the things that God is introducing you to, the levels that God is introducing you into, you are going to have the capacity in the spirit to sustain that kind of a level. He loved my God. You don't know, think like yesterday. Your actions are going to and in sync with the Holy Ghost. You're not gonna act like yesterday. I pray for a hundred percent overhaul of the spirit of God in your mind, in your spirituality, in your actions, in your obedience, in the mighty name of the Lord. You shall be able to forbear the weight of glory in this season, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now for you. I pray for personal revival, personal revival, personal revival. And I pray for a dimension of a single personal revival. Let me tell you something about, about revivals. Those of you that have studied revivals, I've done that. And one of the things I've noted with most of the revivals, specifically the Azusa Street revival, you will notice when they began to pray and they were praying consistently for six hours every day, then the spirit of God told them increase to eight hours, increase to nine hours. And they were able to maintain that revival by that level of prayer. So when you hear me telling you, there is a dimension of spirituality that only can maintain what God is burning in you. Because even the greatest of the moves of God, they were not just sustained by people just being in a comfort zone. They were not sustained by their spiritual activities of yesterday, when the Spirit of God brings the new in your life, He will bring the manual on how to sustain the move. Ala mokota bakata, le prada konsale bakaya. I read concerning Catherine Coleman and I realized that every time before she would go into a meeting, let's say the meeting is in the afternoon, eight hours before that, Catherine Coleman would be hard praying for eight hours and crying to the Lord, trusting the Lord for the meeting, trusting for the move of God eight hours before. And that is how she moved with a lot of power. We may not all be Catherine Kuman, we may not all be the carriers of the Azusa revival, but there is a dimension of God in you. There is what God wants to do through you. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying that you're going to have an understanding of the level of spirituality, the level of prayer, the level of giving us that will sustain you as a millionaire that God has called you to be. Let me tell most of you that God has called in the ministry or God has called in the kingdom as givers. I want to give you this tip. One of the mistakes I've seen a lot of givers doing is that they do not sustain. They do not sustain a giving lifestyle that is actually going higher and higher and higher. Most givers, what they do, they can give a big amount. And then all of a sudden, they go back. Why? Because at that specific time, they had the faith to do that kind of a giving. But then come tomorrow, they do not have that faith. So they go back to little amounts. And that way, you can never become what, look at people who are consistent, not just in giving. Consistent in giving is good. But I'm talking about consistent in giving in amounts that are suggesting I am going somewhere. Amounts that are suggesting I'm taking a territory in business. Amounts that are suggesting I'm taking a, a leadership position in a company. That is the kind of giving that will cost you to rise and rise and rise. But if your giving is like this and like this, now that is very, very okay because your giving is okay, but that cannot sustain you for the next move of God as a person that God is going to use to sustain the gospel. So those are the things that I'm talking about because I know some of you have been called to be financial pillars, but then your giving is like this, it's like this, it's like this. And you know what? It is an attack of the enemy because deep inside you want to give, but you find that every time you want to give, you don't have much to give. So in the mighty name of the Lord, I'm praying for you 
that all around, all around you, you will know what level of spirituality will sustain you for where God is taking you. You know, yes, prayer is important, but for some of you, prayer is not enough because you've been called as a financial pillar. And so giving will sustain you. To some of you, prayer is good. I want you to know prayer is a foundation. So to some of you, Prayer is good, but you need to acquire more knowledge for the level that God is taking you. That means you might need to study more. That means you might need to research more. That means you might you might you might need to have more mentorship speaking into your life. So prayer is the foundation. But beyond that, there are dimensions of knowledge, of giving up, of obedience, you know, of, of connections that you will need. And therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will know your area. And you will maximize not only prayer, but that's what God wants you to do, to sustain the move of God, to sustain the access that God is giving you. And God has already given you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wanna read a scripture here. Because uh, there is something that I want us to pray about. Uh, I want to read the same book of Esther, uh, chapter number six, uh, from verse number one to three. The same book of Esther. Remember, today we are praying with the whole book of Esther. Uh, if you're joining us now, I have already explained uh, the flow of the book of Esther from chapter one to chapter number 10. Now, book of Esther six, verses one to three says, On that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to bring the book of records uh, of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of uh, Begather and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains and uh, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king, Hasiras. Verses number three. And the king said, what honor and dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. Now, there is something I want you to see here. I want you to see something here because remember we are studying, let me just say we are studying the book of Esther and praying with it. Now, in chapter number four, they have prayed, right? They have fasted. The Jews have prayed and fasted. In chapter number five, Esther have received favor, right? So in chapter number six, Mordecai is remembered. So from chapter number four, we start seeing things opening. Things are opening. So these two people, their seasons had changed. Even Mordecai, his season, at, do you know the season of Mordecai promotion did not come now? No, no, it was there. It was a fasting that unlocked it. It was a fasting, a prayer that unlocked it. So some of you that are hoping something will happen in the future, it is already there. There is a dimension of getting deeper in the Lord that will cause you to go into it. So the Bible says that that night the king couldn't sleep. Why? Because previously Mordecai had done something good and he protected the king from being executed. However, there was no reward. There was no reward that was given to him. Now that they have fasted, the king asked for the books of remembrance and Mordecai from there, his life began to change. So they were doing fasting to protect the Jews from this killing that was going to happen. What Mordecai didn't know is that already what he had done was enough to promote him. What Mordecai didn't know is that his previous kingdom service, his previous work was already qualified to reward him, to honor him. You know what? There is a power as you pray, as you fast, as you give, as you do kingdom service, I want to bring into your attention, there is a power that hinders you from being rewarded. There is a power that hinders you from getting increased, from getting honored. Mordecai had done well before the king, but he couldn't be rewarded. He couldn't be honored. He was forgotten. And some of you, the reason why you, you, you really believe I'm going to give this seed and I'm going to get a new season economically. You believe I'm going to serve God so faithfully and my life is going to change. You give a seed, I'm trusting God for marriage. You, you do something that you know shall have power. You do something that has power to unlock or give you access to the next level. But you don't see it. 
is a power. That is a power that hinders people from accessing their reward. That is why most of the people are frustrated because they have done, have you ever heard people say, I've done everything I know to do. It is very common in Christianity. I've done everything. Everything I know to do, but you don't get results. Why? Because there is a power. It will deny you access. It will deny you reward. It will deny you honor. And we see, look here. Please understand, these are not people who are not praying. This, these people, they knew prayer. But there is a dimension they engaged that caused even Mordecai to be remembered. Asha no makadaba. Ile mokodaba kaya. Ile kodababa. A person who was supposed to be how, uh, to have been rewarded, to have been honored. But we find him at the gate, being harassed by Haman. That is how the enemy has negative pr uh, plans against you. Mordecai has done well, but he remained at the gate, receiving harassment. Well, he should have been rewarded. And that is how most of you, you have remained at a very position where you should have come out of but there are powers that have hindered you from getting your reward. Therefore, as we pray today, I am declaring you will no longer be a victim of harassment like Mordecai. You will no longer be a victim of harassment. Your life will not harass you. Some of you are givers, but life have harassed you. Some of us love God, but life have harassed your children. Life has harassed your husbands. They are drunkards, but you're so prayerful. You so love God, but life has harassed you from left and right. You do not know what to do. You pray, but there is just something that causes you not to see the relevant kind of answers you should be getting. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I am declaring right now, and I am commanding right now, the combination of every power that has harassed your life, harassed your businesses, your career and your family and your spiritual life, every demonic power that has been harassing you, no matter what you do, no matter what principle you apply in the name of Jesus Christ, I am declaring right now that power is terminated, that power is terminated by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I terminate that power, I terminate Get that power. I destroy that power. You are not going to be harassed in the place of your greatness. Remember Mordecai, that place, that palace, that kingdom was the place of his greatness, but he was harassed. He was harassed, staying at the gate and required to bow before Haman. Harassed in the place of your greatness. That is why most of you don't sleep. You can't sleep because your business is not working. You can't sleep. You're supposed to be enjoying your marriage, but you're so much, you know, things are not working. You can't enjoy it. You're supposed to be thanking God for your children, but things are bad. Things are bad with your marriage, your children, your finances. You are being harassed in the place of your greatness. In the mighty name of the Lord, in the order of Mordecai, I am declaring right now, whoever needs to remember you, I command the books of remembrance that are consoling you to be open now in the name of Jesus Christ. Men and women that are supposed to remember you, that are supposed to promote you, that are supposed to open doors for you, that are supposed to show you kindness. I am praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the order of Mordecai, you're not going to be harassed in the place of your greatness. I command your season of greatness to be released now. In the order of Mordecai, I command the book of remembrance to be open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the order of Mordecai, I am commanding the men and the women who are holding your breakthrough, they will not find rest until they do what they're, they're supposed to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lisa Tabakayam. People that need to remember your number, people that need to dial your number, people that need to write you that email of promotion, people that need to consider you in the name of Jesus Christ, they will not rest. Nobody will take that what belongs to you. No evil hand will take your position. You will not be harassed in the place of your greatness. You are supposed to be great in your career and you are now getting a demotion. You are now jobless in the name of the living God. 
God, I open doors of promotion. I open doors of new jobs. I open doors of increase. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the place of business, the enemy has harassed you with debt. Right now, in the name of the Lord, I crush powers of debt. I crush powers of debt. I crush powers of never having enough. You work so hard. And because you work so hard, you are supposed to be rewarded by the place where you work or by, you know, you know, by... Uh, the, the company, uh, you know, you're supposed to be rewarded, but you do not see reward. Maybe there is an excuse, there is no money. Uh, maybe there is an excuse, there is no profit. But what we know, we children of God, when we do right, when we serve God right, our reward does not look at the economy of the land where we are. Our reward does not depend on the economy of the day. Therefore, in the name of the living God, I am declaring right now, you are going to get your reward. I'm releasing your honor. I'm releasing your honor. They will treat you with dignity. They will open doors for you. I release your crown. Lipa soto makadaba. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be harassed by debt collectors. You're not going to be harassed by the spirit of lack. You're not going to be harassed by the powers of darkness that have denied you joy in your marriage. These powers of darkness that have denied you an increase and multiplication in your business, no productivity at all in your career. In the name of Jesus Christ, every harassing power right now in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, I destroy you by fire. 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 I release right now grace to be uh, to be distinguished. I release the grace to be distinguished. I release the grace over you to be honored. I release the grace over you to multiply. I release the grace over you to increase. I release grace over you, grace of favor. Lisa Taba, look at the salabaka. Hila Mokodaba. When they look at you, they will not say you are at the gate. Therefore, you don't you, you don't fit in the palace. You be considered. Even when your CV does not qualify you, you'll be qualified because of what you have done. Your reward is Shanabakanda. I command it right now. I program it right now to locate you in the name of the Lord. Wherever your reward is, whoever has your reward, whatever company has your reward, whatever system has your reward, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release it now. Whoever has been standing up against your reward, whatever power that I've said your reward cannot come to you, I execute it by fire. 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 In the mighty name of the Lord, I declare today you are going to enter the doors you're supposed to enter in the name of the living God. You will not stay at the gate. Leave Salabakanda when you are supposed to be in the palace. Right now, I declare that promotion that you've been waiting on, it happens in this second part of the year. You access your promotion, you access your millionaire, your billionaire status. In this second phase of 2021, I am declaring in Jesus' name, you access your marriage, you access your promotions, you access enjoyment in relationships and, 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 and your marriage and your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, let go solo bakanda. I'm destroying right now the power that causes reward never to come to you. I crush it by fire. I crush it by fire. Whatever has dictated that you never get reward, you get disappointments, you get regrets. It's now terminated. You will never get regrets. You will never be disappointed. You will never be called out. In the mighty name of the Lord, you'll be the one to be considered. You'll be the one to be promoted. You'll be the one to be lifted up. You'll be the one to be favored up. You'll be the one to be married up. In the mighty name of the Lord, any power that says up, your business cannot be considered up. In the name of the Lord, right now, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I destroy that power. I destroy that power. I destroy that power. I destroy that power. Ashana Mokodaba. I destroy all the ordinances of the devil against your life. Some of you have ordinances that are coming as far as your family members' background. That is why you keep on failing the same way your family members have failed. That's why you keep on failing the same way you failed last time. Because the reason 
an ordinance an evil ordinance you see the jews there was already a letter that was released there was that data that they cannot survive in the mighty name of jesus christ every evil ordinance with your name every evil ordinance with the name of your business with the name of your career with the names of your children right now it catches fire in the name of jesus it catches fire it catches fire every evil ordinance against your prosperity wherever it is written uh, that you can never prosper because everybody in your family they are below the poverty line uh, in the name of jesus christ uh, that ordinance uh, that evil ordinance uh, catches fire now and it burns to ashes uh, in the name of jesus christ uh, that evil ordinance uh, that says you cannot get married uh, because your mother was not married uh, because your sisters are not married uh, that evil ordinance uh, that says you can never be happy in marriage uh, in marriage uh, because all your family members uh, they are married are never good. Everybody contemplates divorce. There is always abuse. There is always separation. That evil power that says uh, you can never settle in the marital life uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I burn that power to ashes. Uh, those evil ordinances, uh, I burn them to ashes. 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 Uh, in the mighty name of the Lord. Riposotobakaya. Every power of unproductivity, I bring it down now. I bring it down now. You are going to be productive. Some of you, there is an evil ordinance. You can never handle one million. You can never handle one million dollars. You can never handle one million rand. You can never handle one million euros. You can never handle one million shillings. That's why if you look at how much you have ever handled, you never go into millions. You never go into millions. Because there is an evil ordinance. You can, there is an amount of money you can never handle. There is an amount of promotion you can never handle. In the name of the Lord, every evil ordinance that touches your finances, that touches your productivity, that touches the work of your hands, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare, it burns now to ashes. It burns to ashes. It burns to ashes. It burns to ashes. In the mighty name of the Lord, I pray for you. That you're going to increase in business. You're going to increase as a career person. You're going to increase as a family. In the name of the Lord, you're going to be mighty in the land. I declare. You are not going to be among those who are gifted, but nobody recognizes you. That is a power. That's an evil power over you. You are gifted, but not recognized. You have a business, but nobody wants to trade with you. You have knowledge, but nobody is interested in your knowledge. Those are the things that we find in the believers. You see somebody, you meet somebody, they are so gifted. They are so talented. They are so enabled. They are so knowledgeable. But nobody wants to listen to them. I've seen even people write books. Nobody want to read that book. You write books, you produce them, nobody want to read them. That is the power. That is the power. In the area where you are supposed to be great, you find humiliation. You find shame. That is a power. People who are so knowledgeable, that knowledge is supposed to bring you profit. That knowledge is supposed to make you great. That knowledge is supposed to change territories. But nobody listens to your knowledge. Those are the things we are dealing with. Because Mordecai was so gifted that he had that he had that, that thing in, in his heart. He was such a good person that when he hears people conspire against the king, he will not say it's none of my business. No, he protected the king. That was a good man. Gifted, having a good heart, but there is no reward. There is no acceptance. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You have a good heart. When people see you, they're like, why are you not married? You have a good salary. You have a good business. But when people look at you, and why are you in this level? Because nobody wants to marry you. Nobody wants to, to live their lives with you. It is a power. It is, it is not a season that have not come. No. Those seasons, we are making them start now. You will not die gifted and not being used. No, 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 no. You are going to die empty when your day comes. If Jesus carries, if he doesn't rapture us now, you are going to 
to go to him having emptied because people utilize all the knowledge all the ability was utilized ashala makanda le pra ise ne makoda baka ila koda baka yanda ere mokoda bakanda ripa zakayanda le pra i am destroying that evil power that causes people to have no interest with what you have to have no interest with your gifting that power that causes you to be educated and nobody cares about your cv the people who have got no education they are making money than you is a nama kodaba people who have got no education no expertise they are doing business and you cannot do business now that power of hindrance that power that have drew a line and say you can never go there you can never go beyond here in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus I command that power to perish I command that power to perish I command that power to perish I command it to perish by fire I command that power to perish by fire I command that power to perish by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lisa no mokola makaya Ere baba baba baba, ripa shala moko daba, ilako soto le kadia. I decree in the name of the Lord, your seeds are not being lifted, your seeds are not becoming greater. I hear by commander to come. Men in the name of the Lord, I command your season of being lifted up, your season of being a person of power, your season of being a person of authority to commence in the name of the Lord. Whatever is on the way, whatever is on the way. Whatever it is on the way, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I command it to catch fire. Whatever is on the way, whatever is the hindrance, whatever is the limitation, these 40 years you have lived, you have nothing to show. These 30 years you have lived, you have nothing to show. These over 50 years you have in your hands, but nothing to show for it. In the order of Mordecai, I want you to see something here. Esther was a young girl. Mordecai was older, obviously. If, if, if he's the one who brought her up. So obviously he was an older person. But you realize Esther gets access before Mordecai. Esther is the one who says, let us pray and fast. When you find somebody who is older, they, he has wisdom. We have seen him. He has wisdom. He even tells Esther, if you don't do anything, if you keep silent at this time, salvation from the Jews will come from somewhere else. This guy has wisdom. This guy has preacher knowledge. But there is no promotion for him. There are no doors opening for him. He has, he's at the gate. You find you're older. You, you, you find younger people. People who are 20. They are driving the best of cars. They own apartments. They are, they are doing great things. And they are preaching the gospel. They have big businesses. People who are 25. They own land. People who are 30. They will tell you I have three, three plots of land. I am building for my mother. At 40, at 50, you cannot show nothing. That's the spirit that was hindering Mordecai. But you know what God did? When they prayed, as Esther got favor, as Esther got the, 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 the whatever belonged to Haman, Mordecai got his position. And the Bible says he was next to the king. Next to the king. What am I saying? For most of you that are feeling delayed, you know, you've been going to your cousin's weddings. They are 25, they are 22, they are 28. You've been going to their weddings and yet you are 30, yet you are 35, yet you are 40 and you are attending weddings for young girls and young men. I am speaking to you now and I am declaring in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as it was in the case of Mordecai. Let me read a scripture. I want you to see this scripture. This is actually the scripture that ends the book of Esther. It's the last verse, the last verse in the book of Esther. That is Esther 10, verse number three. It says, for Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of the brethren. So he was not only great, he was accepted. Seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. So this was the destiny of Mordecai all along. His destiny was to be next to the king all along, but he was not accessing it. He was getting old as a gate. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I am declaring 
that the time that has been wasted, that power that have wasted you, I am commanding it right now to crash by fire. I am releasing the grace of restoration, the power that took Mordecai, who has been at the gate, and pushed him so forward that he went next to the king. I'm praying that the same power will compress your blessings, whatever you should have received when you were 19, when you were 20, when you were 10 years old. Now you are 50. I pray for you today that the power of God that took Mordecai from the gate will take you from where you are right now and the blessings of God that you have not been able to get, they will be compressed and now that you are 40 you are going to build, now that you are 50, you are going to be in ministry and be what God has always shown you in your dreams, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you yes, the seasons, the seasons of manifestation I command them to manifest the seasons of manifestation to manifest as a great person, as a great woman, as a great man. I'm commanding the commencement of that great season in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Lipa Soto Bakaya. Lekodiyama, lipo soto baka, ila mokoto bakaya, ila kodama kodabaka, lipa soto bakana, ripo zoko la bakaya, modeka. A guy who was working at the gate, he's now next to the king. I want you to see this king as God himself. So the will of God is that you and him are working hand in hand because you're in this world as an ambassador. That is your position, working hand in hand with God. In terms of businesses, you work hand in hand with the Lord. Why? You're an ambassador of this kingdom. In this kingdom, you are an ambassador from the kingdom of heaven. You are placed here to work together with God in business. So in matters of money. He works with you. He, he, he can trust you with several millions for what he wants done. You are next to the king. You are working together with the king. That is your portion. That is the season I'm commanding to commence in the name of Jesus Christ. Ashalabaka. That you work together with the king, and I'm talking about God now. You work together with the king in the marketplace. You work together with him. He can entrust you with powerful business ideas. He can entrust you with unusual wisdom. He can entrust you with governance because you're working hand in hand with him. There is nothing that can disqualify you because you work with him. He gives you all the wisdom, all the resources you have, all the anointing and the authority you need, all the power available within him. you working hand in hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am releasing the grace to work hand in hand with the Lord. That people will look at you and say, this person have God. This business have God. This is not just a career. We see the Lord in it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I open your seasons now. The second half of the year, I open your seasons up. I decree a shifting in the spirit. I decree a shifting in the natural. In the name of Jesus Christ, your children are going to be greater. The children that are a problem, those kids you've been praying for, fasting for those children. I open a new season, a season of obedience, a season of the fear of the Lord. That husband, that spouse that has been problematic, all they do is drink, all they do is waste your life. In the mighty name of the Lord, I am declaring right now, you are going to see that what you've been waiting for a long time, a new season where your spouse is going to be a real partner in life, somebody who can work together with you, somebody who can, can, can bring profit on the table in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm opening season spiritually. Some of you are so gifted, so anointed, but nobody listens to you. You have got no impact. There is no door for you to speak to people. The hearts of people are not open to listen to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm releasing the grace the grace to be listened to, the grace to be able to speak in the lives of people, the grace to transform this generation. I release that grace over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, especially for those of you in ministry, that the area where you are, they will hear you. 
they will hear you. If this end times up, our area is, uh, is, is the mountain of media. Our area, you know, is mostly online. I'm declaring in the name of the Lord, uh, physically you will be heard. Uh, televisions will open doors for you. Online will open doors for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I speak to your business right now. I decree and I declare that your business will be broadcasted uh, right now in Jesus' name. Uh, people will know your business exists. Uh, people will write checks uh, in the names of your business. Uh, clients will come to you. I release good clients to you, not clients who come to disturb your mind, not clients who cannot pay you, not clients who are problematic. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm declaring to you right now, your businesses will begin to make sense. Your businesses will give you a great name. I am declaring to you right now, your gift will be needed. Your gift will be needed. Your talents will open doors for you. I decree and I declare to you that kings and queens are going to nurse you. Ali Mataba, Ikalu Prada, Zenamaka, this second half part of the year, in the mighty name of the Lord, I release a celebration. I I release celebration. I release celebration. I release celebration. You will feel accomplished. You will feel you arrived in the mighty name of the living God. We are coming to the end of prayer. And we usually have Holy Communion in this prayer time. So if you have not prepared your Holy Communion, I want to encourage you just to prepare because we're going to go into the Holy Communion in, in a while, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, make sure that you have you have uh, your, your Holy Communion, you have the blood of Jesus Christ, and make sure that you have uh, the body of Jesus Christ. So I want you to go into a, a, a preparation mode so that we go into the Holy Communion. And some of you that have been trusting God for healing, you cannot access healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we take the communion of today, I'm declaring that you're accessing your healing and you're maintaining it in the name of the Lord. It is true there is cancer in your family. It is true there is diabetes. It is true there is arthritis in your family. It is true there is stroke. But by the holy communion of the day, I am declaring in the name of the Lord, every virus in your body, any bacteria, bacteria in your body, any demonic condition in your body, in your blood, in your bone, in any section of your body, I'm commanding right now by the intake of the Holy Communion of the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus Christ, everything that is evil will be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. As you take the Holy Communion today, I'm declaring the victory of Calvary will accompany your life, will accompany your business. The victory of Calvary will bring that addiction in the name of Jesus Christ, that addiction of alcoholism over your life, over your family. By the intake of the Holy Communion, I am declaring today you are going to see the, that addiction being broken in Jesus' mighty and holy name. The areas you could not access as we engage the mystery of the Holy Communion today, you will be able to access our dimensions of power, dimensions of favor, dimensions of increase, dimensions of multiplication, dimensions of unusual doors opening for you. By the intake of the Holy Communion today, you are going to access dimensions of supernatural grace working over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me and you're not born again? You've never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I want you to repeat this prayer after me so that you can also be able to partake of the Holy Communion together with us. So if you're not born again, this is your prayer. Pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you. I am a sinner. I pray that you may erase my name from the book of death and write my name, Lord, in the book of of life. Today, Lord, I repent before you and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and he rose again. And from today, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. I believe with my heart that Jesus is the Lord. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, thank you, Lord. With that prayer, you are now born again. You are now born again and we thank God for you and you can contact us uh, our details for those that are on Zoom, you're going to see them possibly on the comment box. Uh, God bless you. God bless you for that. So I want to believe that you now have your Holy Communion ready. So I want to read a scripture. I want to read a scripture here. That is the book of Luke 22, verses number 19 and 20. The book of Luke 22, verses number 19 and 20 says, 
and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and give unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I do this every weekend. And so I've always told you that the body of Jesus Christ was broken for our wholeness. It was broken for our wholeness. And as we have prayed today, in the name of Jesus Christ, the reason why he was broken, the reason why he was bruised, is that you enjoy life and have it more abundantly. As you partake of this body, let there be wholeness. That business you've already begun to see signs of closing, let it be whole. That marriage that you have already been threatened by divorce, let it be whole because it was broken for you. That career that has caused you pain, let it be whole. Let you receive favor in your office. Allah makodabaka. Those children that cause you to sleep with tears in your eyes as you partake the Holy Communion with them, I am declaring in Jesus' name, they will be restored to the original order of God. So we can go ahead and have the body of Jesus Christ. And as I have declared, as the cross of Calvary has accomplished, so will it be in your life in Jesus' name. You can now take the body. So the Bible continues to say in verses number 20, that is Luke 22. Likewise, also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. As we take the blood of Jesus today, this is a cup of the blood of Jesus Christ, of the new testament, or some versions say the new covenant. As we are taking this blood of Jesus, every evil covenant in your life, some of you that are evil covenants of death in your families, evil covenants with poverty, evil covenants of witchcraft, sexual covenants that are holding you, covenants that cannot allow you to move forward. You are married, but you're still dreaming with your ex, sleeping with your ex. Evil covenants, sexual covenants, evil covenants that have, were enacted, maybe by you or people you don't know, maybe by your family members. Evil covenants you see in the dream. You see yourself in the dream holding somebody. You don't know who it is. And you, 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 um, you conclude it is a good thing. No, if you, you're dreaming holding somebody, that's already a covenant in the spirit. You're dreaming somebody putting a ring on your finger. And because you're trusting God to get married, you're thinking it's a good thing. No, ring is a sign of a covenant. Why are you covenanting in the dream? So any evil covenant, known or unknown, by the intake of the blood of Jesus today, we are breaking evil covenants. Evil covenants that keep you at the gate when you're supposed to be in the palace like Mordecai. We are breaking those evil covenants by the intake of the blood of Jesus Christ. Evil covenants that cause you never to be favored, that cause your business to go backward instead of you going forward. Evil covenants that have caused you to remain in debt because there are evil covenants of poverty in your family. We are breaking those evil covenants now in the name of Jesus Christ. Covenants with divorce. We are breaking those covenants. Even if you get married in church, divorce will still come. We are breaking those covenants in the name of Jesus Christ. Ashenaba. Covenants of death. If you look at your family, you can actually count how many people have died. There are so many. People just die. People, we have seen people who get sick and they live for a long, long time. But your family you cannot even explain what sickness took that person. People just die. We are breaking those evil covenants with death in the name of Jesus Christ. Evil covenants with the sickness and disease. You are covenanted to be sick because you have to pay hospital bills. We are breaking those evil covenants. So you can go ahead and take the blood of Jesus Christ. And as you partake of it, let every evil covenant be broken. And you enter into the fullness of God of the new covenant in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
I decree the grace of God is upon your life. As I have declared in prayer and in the communion of the day, your life can never be ordinary. I've given you the summary of the book of Vesta. Let that be your case. That you're going to come from a place of being ordinary to a place of greatness. You can give your sacrifices. Our details of giving are going to be on the screen. God bless you. Those of you in South Africa, the banking details are going to be there. Those of you in the US, in Kenya, wherever you are located, the details of giving are going to be available for you. You can use the one that works for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you give, I am declaring that you're going not only to access for once financially, you are going to remain in a place of financial enjoyment in the name of Jesus Christ. That your business is not just going to have profit once, but you're going to enjoy profit month by month in Jesus' name. And not only are you going to get promotion once, but you're going to get all the way to the top and be greater. You see, when Mordecai was remembered, first of all, he rode, you know, around the kingdom. He was honored. But at the end of the day, that was not it. So as you give, I'm declaring, you're not just going to get those small, small blessings and think that is it. No, 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 no. You're going to get everything that is for you. Whatever is yours from the foundation of the earth, as you give, may you receive in Jesus' name. And those of you that have testimonies, I want to encourage you to put on the comment box. Those of you that are on WhatsApp and those of you that are on, uh, not WhatsApp, Zoom, uh, write your testimonies and uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to read them. I usually get a lot of testimonies, uh, but because our time is usually short, I, I, uh, and some testimonies are very personal, I may not be able to just expose what God is doing in people's lives sometimes. It's good to protect people, but if somebody wants me to say what God has done, I do that, right? You know the way it is in our generation. You come here, everything is online. You talk about somebody who got such a contract with so much money. At the end of the day, you put them in danger. That is what I'm talking about. So, yeah. So God bless you. God bless you as you give. God bless you as you give. I appreciate you. All of you that came online, God bless you. I can see you. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Tandani. It's good to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you. I believe all is good with you in South Africa. It's such an honor. By the way, in South Africa, uh, it's now six o'clock in South Africa. So when we began, it was five. It's such a commitment and they're always here. So God bless you, and Danny, you're there. And from the US, God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate you. And Thank you so much for coming on board. Uh, Beatrice, God bless you from my uh, UK. Uh, much appreciated. Esther, wow, you are here today. It's been a while. It's been a while. Esther is from Tanzania, but she's uh, currently in South Africa. God bless you, Esther. May God continue to increase you with your husband. May all be well with you. Esther David, that is my sister. God bless you. That is a woman of God. We thank God for the grace of your life. I honor you. Thank you so much for being in my life. You're such a blessing. Uh -huh. um, Eunice Faith, God bless you. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Eunice, I'm waiting for your testimony. I'm really waiting for your testimony. Uh, Grace, it's good to see you. I believe you're feeling much better. God bless you. Uh, Grace Yvonne, good to see you. How are things going with you? Irene Wasira, how are things? Irene is a woman of prayer. She sees angels as she takes a walk. She's strolling on the road and she's getting encounter with angels. People have got testimonies here. Just I don't talk much. But people have got, uh, you know, stuff happening. Uh -huh. Jerusha, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh -huh. Jerusha is very close to me. Uh, Joseph Maora, how are you? Uh -huh. Joseph is one of the last bones on this platform. We love you. God bless you, Joseph. Josephine Nekesa, God bless you. That's my girl. Uh, Joy, one joy. God bless you. How are things going? Uh, doors are opening for you. Europe must obey. Europe must obey, and you go and get your masters in Jesus' name. Uh, Lerato, good to see you. How are you feeling? How are things going? I believe victory is you is yours. Please update me, Lerato, on how you're doing. Lerato is in South Africa. Lillian, hi. Lillian, Lillian is in Seattle. God bless you. Lillian, it's good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Right, and then Mama Shiko, God bless you. Monica, God bless you. Pakamani, how are you? Ruth, good to see you. Uh, Susan, Orimo is in Texas. God bless you. Winfred, Inieri, God, you're so many. God bless you. I might not have seen you. Uh, God bless you. Those of you on Facebook, I, I appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you so much. Kevin, God bless you. Uh, Sharon, God bless you. Uh, Carol, God bless you, Caroline. Uh, Elizabeth, you're here. Uh, Victory, praise, God bless you. 
Thank you so much. I see my brother Gich, you are there. God bless you. Uh, thank you so much, Darlene Budjik. You are in Cheyenne, in Wyoming. God bless you. I love you, all of you. I appreciate you. I honor you. Now, this coming Saturday, I believe is the 17th of uh, July. Uh, that means that we, we have a meeting in our church. That means I'll have to be traveling very, very early to uh, arrive there on time. So we'll not have a meeting on Saturday. Uh, those of you that are on the WhatsApp group and those of you also who see my uh, messages, maybe um, on Facebook status where I update, we possibly will have the meeting on the Wednesday. So keep on looking on the group on WhatsApp, keep on checking on my uh, Facebook uh, adverts. You're going to see because Saturday we can't have this meeting. I'll be on the road going to a meeting. So Wednesday, I believe Wednesday is going to be our day for this meeting where we pray. Until next time, I love you. I love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm just going to look at your comment here. So God bless you until then. Enjoy your weekend, by the way. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, have a great time. It's a new season. Behave like it, eat like it, dress like it, have a good attitude because it's a new season. Amen and amen. I love you all. Amen.